All right, let's get started. Uh, thank you everyone for coming in here. Um, it's a great pleasure for me to be presenting at TechEd this year. In fact, this is the first time that I'm presenting and uh, I'm so excited about it. Uh, there's actually so many things that we're going to cover today and hopefully there'll be a lot of giveaways. So um, whether it's just uh, some of the knowledge that I can transfer for you guys or simply um, some code that you can have a look at and everything that we're going to be doing today is available on my personal blog and you can download it. There's a lab over there. You can download the code. You can do the um, implementations yourself. So I'm Rami and um, I, I guess the microphones are working. I can hear myself so I'm pretty sure everyone can hear me in the room, even the people sitting in the back. Uh, but before I start, I just want to get to know my audience a little bit. Now, don't worry too much. I don't, I don't like to pick on people because I don't like to do that myself. So I'm just going to ask some general questions and um, just to get to know you a little bit better. So raise of hands, how many of us are using CRM 2011 or CRM 4.0? That's good. That's about three quarter of the audience. That's, that's more than what I expected. Um, how many developers do we have in the room? Okay, so about half, and you guys, you guys are not allowed to ask any questions during that presentation. I don't want to have anything difficult to answer. And who thinks that lunch should be served at 1 o'clock rather, or at 12 o'clock rather than 1 o'clock? Well, that's good, because I'm hungry, and I just want to go over my presentation as fast as possible, because I just want to go over it and, and um, yeah, just enjoy my lunch. So we have 60 minutes. And um, there's a lot of things to cover, so I guess I'll have to start uh, getting into it. And we're going to start by looking at what's on the agenda today. So first of all, I'm going to start by talking a little bit about myself. So who am I? What is my technical background? Where do I work? And after that, we're going to have a look at a portal that we're going to build today. So at Fujitsu, which is the company that I work at, we built a grants management system that is using a CRM 2011 backend. Now, um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about how did we decide, why did we decide to build a grants management system? Why did we choose CRM 2011? And why didn't we use other products that are available out there to um, just build, build it rather than do it in-house? And of course, I'm going to demonstrate that portal that I've built. And then after that, we're going to dive a little bit deeper into um, how to build it. So have a look at the architecture behind the portal that we've built. And I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the design, des design patterns. And of course, we're going to um, have a look at what we're building before I start uh, in the last part of the demonstration and then do the actual hands-on uh, coding. So who am I? I'm a senior developer at Fujitsu New Zealand. I'm based in Wellington. And um, as you can see, um, I have a pointer laser working there. Uh, I am certified at the .NET 3.5 level at the enterprise level, so I'm MCPD. And uh, I'm working my way through upgrading that to the 4.0 level. So um, I did take a couple of exams, and I have one more left to complete the entire track. And I'm also an MCTS in a raft of technologies, including SharePoint and CRM 2011. Uh, so yeah, I'm the Microsoft Dynamics CRM expert at Fujitsu. And at the same time, I run, I'm a part of the organizing committee of the Dynamics user group in Wellington. So any of us based in Wellington? Good, good, good. Go Wellington. Um, I, I, uh, I'm part of the organizing committee of the Dynamics user group. So um, if you guys are in Wellington, we usually meet every second Thursday of the month. And uh, most of our presentations are very discussion driven. So we have a lot of, uh, actually I have one of my uh, teammates in here who's also part of the organizing committee. So all of, uh, all of it is uh, discussion driven. So we start by having a, a news section and then also um, we do a tip of the day and then we delve into something a little bit more technical. So if you guys are interested in CRM 2011 and would like to ask questions, um, you're more than welcome to come. And if you're actually part of um, or not based in Wellington and you happen to pass by Wellington on that time, you know, feel free to come in. The website is available up there, so just log in, uh, drop us a, a comment or an email, and then uh, we'll include you into our mailing list. So moving on. Um, what's the history behind that portal that we've built? So at Fujisu, we were approached by ICA. So um, if you guys have seen the Energy Spot ads on TV, 
uh, pretty much that they, they encourage people to um, have more and more energy efficient uh, houses. So they, they give you a grant if you want to install a heat pump, for example, or if you want to do insulation. So I myself applied actually for a grant and I got my house insulated and I only paid 25% of the final bill, which is really good. So they came to us and they wanted a grants management system. So we built that for them. And I must say their requirements were probably one of the more complicated uh, requirements from all the different uh, customers that we had in terms of grants management system. So they had 20, 27 different types of grants. So after that, the Department of Internal Affairs came in and then they asked for a similar system, so another grants management system. And although the requirements were actually much simpler, we realized that there is a lot of similarities in between ECA and the Department of Internal Affairs. So for a grants management system, the story is always the same. People ask for money and the organization gives them money or declines the money, so declines the request. So you have, first of all, a approval process that is going to be run by a workflow. And then after that, um, the information is going to be stored in a backend repository. They're going to um, just communicate with the customer, so by using uh, email, letters, and then they will inform them whether they got the grant or not. And then from a backend perspective, the users are always going, or from the, the customers are always going to have a look at that back office application for reports and for dashboarding. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but in that description that I just gave, I used a lot of keywords that are perfect for CRM 2011. So I talked about workflows, out of the box CRM 2011. I talked about um, uh, reports, out of the box, dashboards, 2011 is perfect for that. And I also talked about communication, letters, le uh, emails, and that's basically activities in CRM 2011. So based on that, we thought CRM 2011 would be the perfect backend for the portal that we're going to build. So after that, we had First Sovereign Trust that came to us, and they basically do um, gambling machines, and all the money that comes from the bank gambling machines goes back to the community, and they wanted the grants management system as well. And we thought, perfect, let's use them as a guinea pig, and let's build the portal with CRM 2011 as a backend. So, we thought, all right, let's start building that. But before that, rather than reinventing the wheel, let's have a look at what's available out there. Maybe we can reuse something. And of course, CRM 2011 has a lot of accelerators that are available, and they're free. So we came across the Grants Management Accelerator, which sounded perfect. That's exactly what we looked for. And um, we downloaded the code. We started evaluating it. But we did find a few shortfalls. One of them was that it was very American-centric. So everything that was written there was very specific to American legislation. And we thought that doesn't sound like a very nice thing to market in a, for, for New Zealand. The other thing, and that was, in my opinion, one of the uh, major issues with it was that it was Silverlight based. Now, don't get me wrong, I have nothing against Silverlight. I myself have built a lot of Silverlight applications, and I think they work perfectly in a controlled environment where you can guarantee that every computer on the network is going to have the Silverlight uh, add-on installed on it. But when it's an internet-facing portal, I don't think it's a good idea. If people using a mobile device, an iPhone, an iPad, an Android phone, they will not have the Silverlight um, add-on installed on it and the entire website is not going to work. So it's not a good idea to use Silverlight. And on top of that, um, coupled with Silverlight, the, the, the whole portal had a weak architecture. So Silverlight encourages the, user, the usage of WCF services or web services. Um, and instead of doing that, they actually had their own custom XML protocol happening in there, which we thought would be a really, really bad thing to, to support. So rather than reuse it, we actually got inspired by it. We reused some little components out of it, and then we built our own. And after all, you must understand that this is what accelerators are for. They're not a product that you can download and then start using straight away. They are here to actually um, just evaluate, have a look at, get an idea, and have it as a starting point so that you can build something bigger. So what I'm going to do right now is actually demonstrate that portal that I have, if I can figure out how to use the switch in there. And I'm going to start actually with uh, Firefox. So.
That's not it. That is it. OK, so as you can see in here, I have Firefox up and running. And that's the portal. And as you can see it right here, it's Fujitsu branded. Now, everything that we've built in that portal is, has actually multiple layers. And one of them is everything is CSS driven. So if I come into Firefox and open my Firebug that I really, really like, and then in my CSS, I change from Fujitsu CSS to First Sovereign, as you can see, the whole site is going to change. If I um, rename that to Spark, which are one of the interested customers, it also changes. NZCT, and so on and so forth. We have a huge list of uh, all the customers that were interested in that product. Now, you have a few static pages, but at the same time, you have some pages that are retrieving information from CRM 2011. And one of them is the FAQ. So at, at the FAQ is actually getting articles from CRM 2011. So we know that in, our, in, in CRM, there's a knowledge base, and in there you can create articles. You can use a rich text formatting uh, tool so that you can edit all of that. And as you can see, all what it generates is actually HTML. So when we're doing the communication between the portal and CRM 2011, we're retrieving that text that is already formatted, and then we're displaying on the page. So there's no extra coding that you have to do in there to have uh, some specific um, uh, formatting. Now I'm going to go to the grants distribution tab. And as you can see in here, it's a serverlite uh, Bing map. It's a fully functional Bing map, and it has all the list of the venues. Um, now, of course, this is a UAT environment, so in the real life, there will be much more information than that. But it's actually retrieving the information from CRM 2011, getting the longitude and the latitude of the different venues, and displaying them on the map. Now, another thing is that black arrow in here. So as you can see, it actually tells you the name of the region, how many grants were distributed in that region, and how much money was uh, given in a specific region. So this information, once again, is stored in CRM 2011. Now, the beauty of using Silverlight is that you can actually format that to have something that looks better um, just by displaying it, for example, on a map. So rather than displaying a longitude and a latitude or an address, you can just plot it on a map. You can do things like, all right, if you have more than 10 grants in a specific region, change the color of the arrow to red. So this will give you a visual representation of what you have in the back end in CRM 2011. Now we're going to build that in a while, so just bear with me until I just go through the demonstration. Um, of course, users can register, and when they register, they will be included as an individual in CRM 2011. Um, now I'm going to log in using my credentials. All right, so I can have a look at the applications that I've submitted. I can have a look, I can edit some of them that are still in uh, draft mode. I can add items or I can just go back and have a look at previous ones that I've already created. So all of this information is actually coming from CRM 2011 as a backend. Now what I'm going to do next is to switch to my fantastic iPad. So it's just a normal iPad, and I'm going to go into Safari. As you can see in here, the portal is displaying properly on Safari. So no matter what your backend is, it's just a matter of following the standards to make sure that everything displays where it should. So if I go to the FAQ tab, it's going to still display my formatted information coming from CRM 2011. Now what's going to happen when I go to the grants distribution? It's going to fall back on a technology that is available um, on the device. So as you can see, it's a Google map. It's a fully functional Google map, but it doesn't have any information. It's just a, a test environment, as I mentioned previously. So no matter what device the, the users are using, you should make sure that whatever backend you're using should be compatible with whatever front end the customers are going to be looking at. So let me switch back to my presentation computer. All right, so what we're building today now, before I get into that, um, I, I understand that everyone in here was actually in the keynote speaker this morning. So, yeah. Um, there was Noam Judah who was actually talking about the cloud. I started by counting how many times did he say the word cloud. I counted 20 because that's how many fingers and toes I have. But then after that, I lost count. After that, we had Chris Old from Intigen, and he was talking about... Um, 
using CRM 2011 as a backend to the portal that he was presenting. Now, hopefully, I'm not going to have any issues with my demonstration like he had this morning. So let's hope everything goes well. And then after that, you had Nigel from, from Microsoft. And he was talking about MVC3 framework and how he's using it as a portal. And that's exactly what I'll be doing today. So when I listened to that, I thought, oh, probably I'm on the right conference. I'm not uh, somewhere else. So what are we going to build today? So we're going to start with a CRM 2011 on the cloud. Everything that I'm doing today is going to be with a backend that is on the cloud. And I bet you all those who are here who are not developers, so we have the two chaps in the back with the gray hair, even if you're not developers, I'm pretty sure you'll be able to download my code and actually start using it. My fiance is a lawyer, and lawyers and IT don't go together, and she was able to download the code and actually do all the portal from scratch. So it's really simple, it's really straightforward. CRM 2011 on the cloud. For those who are not using CRM 2011, go online, register for a free trial. You can have it for a month and you can play with it, you can build a portal with it, you can do whatever you want with it. Um, one of the things that we've added onto our CRM instance is a custom entity called Regions. So this is just a list of records that we called Regions and it's going to have the name of the region, the longitude and the latitude. What we're going to build on the presentation tier is going to be is going to use the MVC3 framework. And the MVC3 framework is going to be using the Razor engine. So I'm just going to spend a couple of minutes explaining what the Razor engine is. So for all of those who have done ASP.NET uh, development before, they're used to the inline code in your HTML page that would have angle brackets and percentages, and then you would just type in your code. The Razor engine is very similar to that, except instead of having angle brackets, you start with an at sign. So it's really simple to, to use, and you're going to see that when I start building the portal. But at the same time, it's very unit testing friendly, which I think is a very important point. So we'll be using that. And um, after that, we're going to, the portal is going to have two pages. The one is going to retrieve the list of all accounts that we have in CRM 2011. And the second one is going to retrieve um, the venues or the regions that we have in our CRM 2011 instance and display them onto the Bing map. So the architecture, what's the architecture that we're going to follow? Although that looks a little bit um, too complicated, but it's nothing but a three-tiered application. So the bit in dark blue at the bottom is the presentation tier. The bit in the middle, which is the core, is the business logic. And then the bit at the green is the data tier. So where the communication will happen between CRM 2011 and the portal. Now notice that the only thing that is common to all of them is the business logic. But at the presentation tier, you can have different types of presentations. So what I have in here is the Razor view, which is the HTML view. I also have a Silverlight Bing map, so that's a different type of presentation, or a mobile application. And when I say mobile application, I mean Windows 7, so an application that is specific to Windows 7. I mean an application for the Android, an application for the iPhone, the iPad, whatever you want. So no matter what your backend is, you should be able to provide anything at the, at the bottom uh, layer. We have the business logic, once again, that's the core of it. And then we have the data layer, which is at the top. Now notice that the business logic is communicating with any one of those different um, concrete classes by following an interface. So everything goes through the iData access layer. And the interface is actually going to provide the business logic with a contract saying, what is exposed over there is going to look like that is going to have, is going to ask for specific arguments, but it's not going to tell us how the concrete implementation is going to happen because the business logic does not care at that stage. So I'm going to talk about design patterns in a, in a second, and I'm going to show you that we're going to use a factory method to actually decide which concrete class is going to be instantiated. And of course, we have CRM 2011 um, at, at the top. We're also going to use an MVC um, sort of design pattern. So the model is going to be over there. So that's what's on my right, your left, and some common uh, functionality. So moving on, uh, repository pattern. This is what Microsoft calls it, the repository pattern. And it's actually in, in, in plain old design pattern that's called inversion of control, which means that the control is going to happen somewhere else. 
So we have our business logic who's going to communicate with a factory pattern or a factory method. And that method is going to decide what concrete object to return. So as you can see in there, I'm not really sure if the code is visible or not, but it will have a switch statement that will go through uh, a specific configuration. So that can be coming from the, your config file, app.config, web.config. And based on that, it will decide which concrete class to return. And of course, the return type is an interface, iData access layer. Um, so the factory pattern, which is right there, will instantiate the concrete classes. So if we're doing unit testing, that will be a mock object. If we're using SQL, that will be a SQL um, concrete class or CRM 2011. And all of those inherit or implement the interface that is at the top. And the business logic at the bottom knows that it's only communicating with that interface at the top. So that's one of the patterns that we use in our, in our portal. Now the other bit is the MVVM or MVC. Now I'll just explain a little bit what it means. So you have three components, so MVC, model, view, controller. The model is nothing but an object, so POCO or in the Java world, POJO, so plain old C-sharp object. So in there you would have some attributes that are related to the object that you want to manipulate or display somewhere. After that, you have your view. So the view is what you see on the page. So your HTML, your XAML, whatever technology you're using, this is what's going to be displayed on the final product. And then finally, you have the controller. And the controller's job is to orchestrate those two together. So the controller will listen to the view. So someone clicked on a URL, someone clicked on a button, the controller will handle that event and then it knows that in the next view, there's a specific model that should be there. So it will go to, to the business logic and ask for a specific model, grab it, and then display it onto our view. That's how it's all going to work. Now, where does the view model come in? So the view model is a specific view that is specific to the model, or a specific model that is specific to the view, sorry. So the way we've built it is that we've inherited from our models to create the view models, and we would add extra fields and values that are specific to whatever has to be displayed in the view. So in the Razor um, example, we need, for, um, we need buttons. So we need to know that buttons are going to be available on our view. They have nothing to do with the actual model, but they have to be there. So that's why we create this layer in between the two. And another example would be a drop-down list. So a drop-down list would have, for example, four values, um, four whereas the, um, the actual model will only have one value. So it doesn't need to know about the other. So that's why you introduce that view model in there to include things that are specific to the view that you're going to display. So whether it's you're using an XAML view or um, you're using the Razor engine, that's why you introduce it. All right, so that's what we're going to be building today. So you have the architecture that we've discussed, and then on the right, or my left, or, sorry, my right, your left, you're going to have the solution with all the projects that we're going to be working on today. So I'm going to map each one of those to uh, the project. So we have the model. We're going to start with the model, which are our objects, C-sharp objects, and that's the project that is related to it. After that, we're going to start looking at the data layer. So start by building the interface. And after the interface, we're going to build the concrete CRM class and then a WCF service that is going to be used for our serverlite view. After that, we will tackle the business logic and communicate with our concrete class to retrieve the information that we want. And then finally, we're going to work on the data tier or the presentation tier, sorry, and then have the controller first, followed by the view, and then finally, the server light Bing map. So let's go there. I'm just going to wind back to where I have to be and then start with the model. So switching to my computer. All right. So that's the CRM instance that I talked about. And as you can see in here, we have a bunch of regions. And we're going to retrieve all the information from the regions in there. OK, when it loads. Here you go. All right, so I'm going to switch to uh, Visual Studio. So as you can see, it's, um, it's just a normal uh, Visual Studio instance. And as I said, we're going to go to the model and start building from here. Now, just before that, I'm just going to run it. 
And for any of us who have done MVC uh, 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 development before, this is sort of what comes out of the box when you just uh, start with a sample project. So there's the home tab and the about tab, but I've added another tab called the Bing map. And right now it only has uh, just a fully functional Bing map with no information on it. So let's close that. Let's start with the model. So as I said, two things that we're going to create. The first one is going to be um, the accounts that we're going to retrieve, and the second one is going to be uh, the region. So here you go, that's my first class. I'm going to say public accounts, and it will have one property, and it's going to be the name. That's my first model. Very simple, nothing too complicated. My, my fiance can do it, you can do it. Okay, moving on, creating another object, and the next one is going to be the region. I'm going to put in public. So this one is going to have two properties. The first one is going to be of type string and it's going to be the name of the region. And the other two, did I say two? I meant three. So it's going to be a decimal um, longitude and the other one is going to be decimal latitude. Now one thing I forgot to do in the previous, um, in the previous object was to actually create a list or a region account, a region collection that is going to inherit from list of region. All right, I have an error in here. Oh. Thank you. There you go. Okay, so I'm just going to do the same thing in the account. And this is just for simplicity once we start using the MVC um, uh, framework. Public class account collection. All right. And that's all what we have to do for our model. So I'm going to close that and switch back. So that's the first bit, the model. Second bit, we're going to work on the data tier. So I'm going to do everything together, start with the interface, and then after that, build the CRM concrete class and then the WCF service. So let's do that. All right. So I'll go to my data access layer, and I've already created an interface in here. So all what I'll do is um, just include a couple of uh, classes that I'm going to be using. So let's start with uh, getting the accounts from the account collections. So get accounts. And then the next one is going to be to get the regions. So it's that simple. Now notice when I'm going to compile that, is going to come up with an error, and that's because the CRM concrete class that I have implements the interface. And now it noticed that we have a couple of missing methods. So it's complaining that I cannot, the compiler does not accept that. So I'm going to have to go to my concrete class and implement those and do the same thing in the WCF service. Um, now one thing that I didn't mention is the usage of specific attributes. So the reason why I have those attributes in here is to give the WCF a hint of what is going to be exposed outside of, um, or what is going to be exposed to the public. So those are attributes for WCF. So let's go to my uh, CRM concrete class, which is right there. And what I'm going to do is right click onto the interface and then say implement interface. And here you go, those are the methods that I want. And what I'm going to do now is actually light, write um, a late bound link query that connects to CRM 2011. So the first thing is to get the proxy. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about how to connect with CRM 2011. I mean, I only have 60 minutes in that presentation. I wanna go through the whole portal. But if you are interested, uh, come to my next session tomorrow. So tomorrow I'll be talking a little bit more about um, how this communication happens. How are you going to have, for example, an early bound link query that can communicate with CRM 2011 with all the context that you need? So if you're interested in that, come, come and see me in my next presentation tomorrow. All right, coming back to our accounts. So we're returning a list of accounts, so let's call it accounts. And it's going to be 
a collection of accounts that we've just created. And then what I'm going to say is from my account, I want to add a range. And that range is going to have a list, oops, coming from um, a late bound link query. Okay, so what are we going to do is from account in proxy dot, and then straight away it will come up with um, a value so that I can actually create my uh, link query, and I'm going to say account. So this is the schema name, what it's called in CRM 2011. And as you can see, I'm guessing what it's called, and this is what we call a late bound. So everything is going to be checked at runtime, not at compile time. And from there, I'm going to select a new account. And of course, we only have one attribute in here, which is the name, and it's going to come from account. And then in there, I'm going to say name dot to string. Okay. And then that is going to be converted to a list, which is going to be added to our account. And then finally, we're going to return the accounts. So that's the first bit. We've implemented our CRM 2011 concrete class in that specific method. So the next thing I'm going to do is get the regions. And this is going to be a little bit more complicated because we're retrieving the location. So pretty much the same thing. Start with getting the proxy. And then after that, create your regions. And then populate those regions. So I'm going to do from region and proxy. Now I have to make sure that I don't make any spelling mistakes, because if I do, then um, it's going to fail at runtime. And as you can see, since this is a custom um, entity that we've created, I have the prefix new. And all the attributes in here are also going to be prefixed by the word new. So select a new region. And then name equals region dot, oh, sorry, new name. And then now we'll do some conversion so that we can actually have the longitude equals um, now, of course, this is not a perfect uh, query because I'm just assuming that all the information is in there. In, in a real world example, you would probably have um, checks or in, you would have a condition that will make sure that you do have a longitude and a latitude. So this one is longitude. And the next one is going to be the latitude. That's the last bit. All right. No spelling mistakes. And finally, convert it to list, and then return the regions. All right. And that's our concrete class. So now, now that we're done with that, we're going to try to compile again. And once again, it's going to fail. And the reason why it's going to fail is because our WCF service is implementing that specific interface, and we haven't um, we, we didn't include the different um, uh, methods. So what I'm going to do there is go to my WCF service and say implement interfaces. And instead of rewriting the same code, I'm going to use the CRM 2011 concrete class that we just created. CRM 2011 and then return CRM 2011 dot get account. So that's the one that we've just built. And the other one is going to be to get the regions. Oops. OK. Now, typically, this is where you would use your factory pattern, because WCF should not know that it's connecting to CRM 2011, but it should only uh, ask the factory method to actually decide which backend we're going to be using today. And that's it for, our, for the uh, data layer. So after that, we're going to tackle the business logic. So let's go there really quickly. And it's going to be exactly what we um, what we did in the WCF service. So um, I'm going to create static classes, uh, sorry, static methods, so public static uh, get accounts. That's the only one that we need for this business logic. And I'm going to say uh, CRM 2011 
new CRM 2011. So that's the one that we've just created and then return the list of regions, uh, sorry, the list of accounts that we, so that's the concrete method that we've created. Oh, we don't have a return type. Get accounts. Why is that not happy? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. Okay. So that's the business logic. That's what we're going to do. So now we're going to go to the MVC3 project and then create a new page or in the controller say that we have a new page, get this information from the uh, business logic and then display it onto our view. So let's do that. So MVC3, I'm going to go to the controller, which is called um, account controller, and I'm going to create a new, um, uh, just a new page, and I'm going to call it accounts. And then in here, I'm going to um, just get my list of regions, um, and that's going to come from the business logic. So business logic dot get accounts, sorry, it's accounts, not regions. And then finally return a view with the accounts. Okay, and that's what I have to do in the controller. So get the information from the business logic and then display it onto the view. Now let's create that page. So I just right click on the name of the method and then go add the view. So what I'm going to do that is going to create a CHTML page and that's the, uh, what the Razor engine is going to use. So it's going to ask for a name and that should be matching the name of the method. So that's accounts. And I know it's strongly typed because it's going to have uh, a list of accounts. And then it's going to inherit from a master page or a layout page that is there. So click on add and here you go. It created the, um, the page for me. And as you can see, it has this, those at uh, signs in there, and this is what is going to give a hint for the Razor engine that what we have in here is actually code. So I'm going to create an um, unordered list. So this is simple HTML, and then I'm going to loop in my model, so for each item in model, and it's going to automatically know that those items are actually accounts. So a list item, and then I'm going to say item dot, and it automatically associate the model that I've created with what is available. So I'm going to say name. I wanna display the names on that page. So the last thing before I actually uh, demonstrate um, how the portal is working and before we do the server light is to go to the layout page and add that new link. So that's in the shared layout. And I'm going to add the link that we're going to call, for example, TechEd, and it's going to go to a specific view called accounts and the controller called account. So let's build that. So as I've demonstrated before, there were three tabs at the top. Now we have a fourth one that is called TechEd. So I'm going to go into the TechEd one. And what will happen is that the controller is going to notice that someone in the view just clicked on the URL. So it's going to communicate with the business logic in the back end. The business logic is going to go to CRM 2011, is going to load those concrete classes, is going to send it back to the business logic, and is going to display it, uh, give it to the controller and display it on the view. And as you can see on the page, those are the different accounts that we've displayed. So it's really, really easy to build something coming all the way from CRM onto our portal. So the next bit is to do the WCF with uh, Silverlight. So let's quickly do that. Uh, sorry. So let's go to the Bing map. And I'm going to right click onto the services and say add service, discover, and that's the one that we've created. I'm not going to bother renaming it. Okay, and I'm going to go to my code behind. And finally in here, I'm going to say, um, first of all, f um, instantiate the client. So as you can see, it will come up with the interface that we've, we're inheriting. And then when I do client dot, it will know that I'm exposing specific methods and one of them is get regions. 
Okay, so on complete, there's a callback method that I just created in here. And then what I'm going to say is call that specific method asynchronously. So get region asynchronous. All right, so what are we going to do in here? First of all, we're going to get the results. So those are the regions. It was e dot result. And then, of course, everything, the proxy classes that were generated in the background will know exactly what the attributes are in here. So um, what we're going to do next is loop into each region, so for each region and regions. And then we're going to create a push pin. So to do that, we're going to say var pin equals new push pin. Okay, and in here we're going to give it some information. So for example, the content, let's do it a dollar sign, or let's call it, let's do a T. And then the location. So the location is what is going to have the longitude and the latitude that we're actually getting from uh, the service. Now I'm just going to convert that to a double, and I'm going to say region dot, and it will automatically know that we have a latitude in here. And then the next one is going to be the longitude. All right. So now that we've done that, we're going to, before we add it onto our Bing map, what I'm going to do is just add um, a tooltip. Pardon? Oh, okay. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. No? Oh, yeah. This is the semicolon. Things like that always happen. Okay, so tooltip services dot set tooltip, and what we're going to do in here is actually give the specific pin um, a tooltip, and that's going to be the region dot name. Okay. And then the last thing, of course, is my Bing map that I've created, dot add, uh, sorry, dot children, dot add, and then pass it the pin. All right. And that's all what we have to do from the server light end. So let's run that. And let's go to the Bing map. Now this is going to take a little bit longer because I have a lot of regions, but basically what's going to happen is the exact same thing that happened before. So the server light is going to communicate with the WCF service. The WCF is going to uh, go to the CRM concrete class and then retrieve those information and display all the different regions into our Bing map. And if I zoom in, some of them are uh, not 100% correct, but you just hover over it and then you can see the actual name of the region that you want. So once again, Coming from CRM 2011, really easy to build. So let's go to the slides. So that was, we've built the business logic, the MVC3, and then finally the serverlight application. So once again, if you guys are interested in my second session, it's going to be tomorrow at 1040 in the Elliott Room. So that's in the other building. You just go down to the Crown Plaza on the ground floor. Don't go up the, st the stairs. And the room is right there. And um, it's, I'm going to have a look at a little bit more details on what's happening in the background. So how is the communication happening? What is the protocol that is being followed? What are the information that are being sent from your application to the CRM 2011 backend that is on the cloud? Um, some of the resources that are available, my blog is all the way up there. As we're speaking, there's a, an automated uh, post that is going to get published. And that is going to have a link to my personal SkyDrive where you can download all the code. So you can just uh, follow the, pretty much the post on, that, um, on my blog and then build that exact solution from scratch. And um, of course, if um, as a de developer for CRM 2011, you would have used the CRM SDK. So you always download the latest version. This is the latest version, um, which is 5.05. .05. And then, of course, the Serverlight SDK, if you want to do any Serverlight um, development. MVC3 framework, I strongly recommend that you guys download that and use it. It has a steep learning curve, but once you go over that learning curve, you'll realize that it's, it's a fantastic framework to work with. Uh, keep in mind that the MVC3, the MVC framework, as, or as a design pattern itself, was actually coined in 1979, and that's when 
Microsoft was only four years old and MS-DOS was not even created. So it's quite an old design pattern. The framework is at the third version. It's there to stay, so use it, take advantage of it. And um, yeah, the grants manager accelerator that I, that I commented about is, is right there. Follow me in, on Twitter if you're interested in the type of work that I do, CRM 2011 uh, development. And uh, also to more, in tomorrow's session I have some giveaways, so a little prize to give away. So um, I just saw Hamish in the back going, oh, giveaways, I want to be there. So if you're interested, follow my tweets. I'm going to give you some hints on what the correct answer is. So I'm just going to um, ask a few questions about design patterns for all developers there that might be interesting. Um, resources. Uh, yeah, TechNet and MSDN are two websites that I pretty much go to every single day. So yeah, you guys are encouraged to go there and uh, please, please um, do your evaluations. Um, I really enjoyed being at TechEd and I really wanna be there next year. So if you give me a good uh, evaluation, that would be fantastic. Plus there's a lot of prizes to win. So thank you very much and hope to see you tomorrow. <laughs>